You're all right. Disney still thinking I'm going to fall in love with Pip just because it's a droid. I mean, this one's barely even a droid. It's the forsaken love child of a Nokia 3250 and a TI-84 graphing calculator. Man, this is the first time we've seen a whole group of Jedi fight in live action since Attack of the Clones in 2002. Although this scene is so f***ing poorly lit, some would argue that record still stands. I can tell you from experience, uh, I mean, my friend's experience, that your malfunctioning saber isn't going to spontaneously start working no matter how long you look at it or how hard you shake it. I'm sure the show wants me to be excited about all the lightsabers on screen, but the fact that these red shirts, yes, I'm crossing my sci-fi streams, calm down, it's going to be okay, are dispatched so quickly tells me it was more about giving the stranger some nameless fodder to kill than actually giving us the Jedi fights we violent heathen so deeply crave. I'm wondering what Osha thought this would accomplish. She's gambling her life on the idea that this will distract the stranger into immediately chasing her instead of him taking two seconds to kill Yord and then chasing her. Also, this attack results in the stranger immediately chasing Osha instead of taking two seconds to kill Yord and then chasing her. I'm no saber master, but while I'm sure this works great on a crowd of younglings, for a single enemy, doesn't it make more sense to throw the saber and then turn it on? That way your target will have a harder time seeing it coming, right? Deus sol machina. How the f*** did Yord catch up with Osha? Did he use force healing on his leg? Or some of that force speed Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan use in The Phantom Menace? I'm fine with that, but let's see some f***ing receipts. Force picks or it didn't happen. Yord! We have to go back. And do what? Yord's on one leg and your only weapon barely tickled him. Just once, I'd like the main character to say, you know what, I have my strengths, but in this situation, I'm a f***ing liability, so I think it's best that we just run away. You don't remember me. I sense something familiar. If the helmet is blocking everything, I'm wondering what Soul is sensing. Can Jedi, like, recognize a kidney that they've met before? <laughs> Having force powers, but choosing to deploy what we in the industry call a flying Shatner. I do love it when Wars steals from Trek. And now that I've pulled the pin on that nerd grenade, I'll see you in the comments. Wait, why is May fighting? Wasn't May's new plan to surrender herself to the Jedi once she realized Osha was alive? Okay, Jackie came in hot, but isn't this exactly what May wanted at the end of the last episode? You're under arrest for the murder of Master Andara. The murder of... <laughs> Premature Jedi version of Miranda Wright's abrasion. Also, choosing to reopen that, you had f***ing Carrie Ann Moss as a badass Jedi in this show, but you killed her before the opening titles of episode one. Wound. May goes for the body shot here, which is blocked by Jackie. Luckily, Jackie immediately throws away the shield, which gave May the perfect opportunity to not throw another dagger at Jackie's unprotected torso and instead throw it at this console so all the sparks can blind her for half a second. I don't know what anyone is thinking here. Show your face and let you read my thoughts. No, no. Once upon a time, Disney bought Star Wars and Marvel, and the result is that the characters now think they're free to borrow sh** from any franchise they like, such as telepathy blocking helmets. Also, and this applies to Magneto, how does this helmet block telepathy from, well, the bottom up? I mean, it isn't creating a perfect seal around the brain, so why don't some of the thoughts leak out through the neck? Also, episode two, Attack of the Also's. If the helmet's so important for protecting your thoughts, how did you manage to keep this secret identity sh** a secret back when they met you as Chimere? He's into your head, and he, he stays there. Show confirms that the stranger's helmet conveniently works like a one-way mirror that you see in interrogation rooms. Apparently, the stranger can push his will outwards, but nothing can come back in. Actually, I guess a sphincter would probably be a better analogy. Yeah, yeah. This helmet is a mental force sphincter. What? I see no issues here. Me. You can learn from this bad one. <laughs> learn what? How to become Sith Swiss cheese like a champ? Staring at your broken saber so long that you completely lose track of your enemy. Look, I hate that Jackie is eventually killed, and I'm not saying she had it coming. But if she did have it coming, she wouldn't have been observant enough to notice it. You've always been weak. Considering he definitely lunges for a killing blow in a second, I'm not sure why the stranger decides to cut her handcuffs here. Other than the show needs her to be uncuffed for the end of episode's twin swapping, of course. <laughs> Hold up, that thing stood up to a direct lightsaber strike, but two elbow smacks to the head broke it? Were those force elbow smacks? Man, I bet hitting your force funny bone sucks. The mini lightsaber is pretty f***ing cool, but it is so heartbreaking to see these three holes in Jackie. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. It's not because I actually care. It's because I know two of these holes are just there because Sabine and Riva survived a single skewering and the show knows I'd send anything less than three stabs resulting in death. Well done, Ahsoka and Obi-Wan Kenobi. You've now ruined every single whole lightsaber impaling for the entire franchise. We could still have Qui-Gon. She was a child. You brought her here. A stranger would be an acolyte at TV since. Also, what a f stupid thing to say. Jackie was an incredible Jedi, and she certainly wasn't pulling any punches. Would he have said the same if she killed May or sent the good place here to the bad place? Get the f out of here with that only a child sh You really didn't know it was me. Nah, we all knew. There was no real reason for Chimera to be on this planet, and these reveals always have to be someone you already know. We're just disappointed, again, that it wasn't Carrie Ann Moss. But a Jedi like you might call me... Sith. I hate to keep using the prequel trilogy as a reference guide, believe me, I honestly do, but... Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. And this show apparently takes place a hundred years before episode one, which is significantly less than a millennium. Look, I'm sure there will eventually be some reason why this particular Sith was buried from knowledge, but we all know a retcon when we see one. It's not just the Jedi that can sense a disturbance in the forced narrative. I want a pupil. An acolyte. Roll commercials. So now I have to kill every single last one of you. I don't make the rules. Here's what Fritz has to say about rules in a few minutes. If you never follow them, you never have to break them. So what rules is he talking about here and why does he feel compelled to follow them? Is there an exception for Sith rules? Do the Sith even have their own rule book? Yes, I'm asking for a separate set of rules regarding what the rules are supposed to be. What of it? I've accepted my darkness thing i said after becoming the voice of tv sin somehow makes it into the script the jedi do not attack the unarmed fine but you can restrain the unarmed right especially if they've murdered lots of people why are you giving him so much space also believing that a person with access to an invisible power that allows for telepathy and psychokinesis can ever truly be considered unarmed the strangers just dispatched a bunch of badass Jedi and Yord, but is suddenly whisked away by the flying bugs. This guy's a beast with that lightsaber. How is he not turning them into an endangered species already? Why did he say I shouldn't trust you? Did Osha miss the part where Yord said, He gets into your head and he, he stays there. Does it really seem all that strange that the murderer with the ability to get inside your head would sow mistrust between you and your allies? Soul is such a badass and I love him, which is why it's so infuriating when he doesn't see shit like this coming. Okay, maybe he's distracted or not in tune with the force right now, but that's never made clear. You can't expect me to cheer when he's slaying with a lightsaber and not facepalm when he's stunned like a chump. All of these lives lost tonight, again, all because of you. Well, to be fair, Yord was your fault and credit where credit is due. The Jedi got what they deserved. I could see you making that argument for Sol or Kelnaka, but can you really say every single Jedi who died tonight deserved it? Jackie and Yord had nothing to do with your home being destroyed. They weren't even Jedi at the time. Did they deserve to die solely for the crime of being type A? What are you doing? What I came here to do? Arrest you. <laughs> with what, a shoulder lock? Osha does realize May is much better at, well, everything, right? Is Osha really going to subdue her with her low-key, low-G repair skills? Osha falls victim to the classic Sith attack of being knocked off screen so that we're not exactly sure what happened, but we'll accept that whatever it was knocked her out. Using a lightsaber to cut your hair this well is either an abuse of the force or such a useful application that it's a sin we've never seen it done before. Where is she? Who? Your sister. We're gonna find out some shit about May and Osha being technically the same person, but how in the name of the Olsen twins does Sol not sense something is up here? I mean, why does a stranger bother with a helmet if it's this easy to trick a Jedi? Is it too much to ask for some clarity around what a Jedi can and can't do? Metachlorians is as good as it's gonna get, isn't it? I don't know how I got here. I have no idea what's going on and I am freaking out, homie. Over here! You're injured. Tis but a scratch. Who are you? My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north. And his name is John C. Not again. Jacksonville style, baby. Two thousand points. <laughs> Not the beast. Ah!